Hey everyone, thanks for watching my channel today. If you like to learn more about the human body, about different diseases, I do my uploads every Tuesday. So please remember to subscribe and click the notification button. You might remember in the previous video, I was talking about difficulty in swallowing food. And one of the reasons was because of chronic acid reflux, acid reflux, which has been going on for a long time. We get scarring of our esophagus and the esophagus, instead of being uh, having a hole in it like this size, it becomes very, very tight. And obviously food or whatever we drink gets stuck, can't go through. Today, I'm going to talk about a few conditions in which same thing happens when we eat or drink, the food gets stuck. However, there is nothing actually blocking the esophagus. So I'll try and explain how that happens. Please remember one thing, that if the food is getting stuck time and time and time again, it is very important to go to our doctor and seek medical advice because food getting stuck again and again is not normal and it needs to be investigated. So to understand how does our food go down, when we put food into the back of our throat, it's like putting a little stone or throwing a little stone into a puddle of water. And we throw a stone into a puddle of water, little waves are created. And those waves push whatever is on the water forwards. Same thing happens when we eat food and the food goes to the back of our throat. The throat and the esophagus produce little waves. Those waves are called peristalsis. And those waves push the food down from our mouth, from the back of our throat, into the stomach. So what creates these waves that pushes the food down? Now, in my view, there are two things which are very important. One, so that is our esophagus and that is our stomach here. One I've drawn in this red, which are the nerves which are coming to the esophagus. Um, and they come from our spinal cord and from our brain. So these nerves are very, very important. Now, to consider what nerves are, so if you have a car, you might have a beautiful car with a V12 engine, but without fuel or any gas in the car, that car is going nowhere. So nerves are like the fuel in our car. If you have no fuel, if there are no nerves or no functioning nerves, then there is not going to be any waves created in the esophagus. Now the second most important thing which helps create these waves is the muscle which lines the esophagus. So esophagus got a wall, and in that wall, the middle layer is the muscle. Now that muscle is, again in a car, is like the engine of our car. We might have a beautiful car, it might be full of fuel, but if there is no engine, the car is going nowhere. So without having a good muscle, the esophagus will not be able to create any waves, and there will not be any movement of the esophagus. Now I'm trying to explain three different situations that might make the food get stuck without anything actually blocking the esophagus. So I've drawn the first situation in which you can see this side a normal size, a normal esophagus and normal nerves, normal muscle of the esophagus. This side, it looks a wee bit different. The nerves are not looking normal. For whatever reason, the nerves are diseased. So there is no fuel going into our car properly. And the secondly, the muscle is too thin. So muscle hasn't got the strength to push things through like this. Instead, it just goes like this. So when the patient is swallowing, the food just cannot go down easily because it's not being pushed down. Instead, the patient has to drink water or something else on top to push the food down. So that is one situation. And one of the very common conditions, although few conditions can cause, cause this, but one of the very common conditions which affects both our nerves and also sometimes our muscle is diabetes. So patients who have got long-standing diabetes for many, many years, they can develop problems like this in which the esophagus does not work normally and they feel like the food is getting stuck. Now in this picture, I have drawn a, a different situation. You can see this normal side like it was before. This side looks different. The muscle looks different and also the nerves look different. What's happening in this situation that the both the muscles and the nerves are working over time. So instead of squeezing the food down like this, it's going crazy like this. 
So if somebody puts a camera in, inside it looks like it's got tight rings on it. And those tight rings, you can see it over here, the food comes and stops, comes and stops, comes and stops. Now there are few conditions which can cause situation like this. We are not entirely sure, 100% sure, that why it sometimes happens to people. Um, but a condition called corkscrew esophagus, when the esophagus actually looks like a corkscrew, or a nutcracker esophagus, in which the esophagus got so much pressure in it that literally it can crack a nut. The only difference between this condition and the condition before I spoke about earlier, in which the esophagus was like a bag, because the esophagus is contracting so hard, the patient complained not just only of food sticking, but also severe chest pains when this happens. So the third condition, uh, in my view, which is very important, is a condition called achalasia, quite frequently present in younger people, in which you can see the esophagus here looks normal, and it is normal. However, what happened in the lower part of the esophagus the nerves to the lower part of the esophagus are damaged. Either the patients are not born with those cells of nerves in the bottom part of the esophagus or they get damaged because of infection, etc. And this condition is called achalasia. And what's happening here is when we eat or drink, the food comes down and this bit of the esophagus is normal. So it's creating the waves and the food keeps getting pushed down. But when it comes to this position where the nerve cells in the lower part of the esophagus are not functioning, are not present, the, the esophagus just does not open. It just stays shut like this. Instead of get opening like a wave, opening and shutting, it just stays shut because there is, um, there is no motor in the esophagus to make it open and the food gets stuck. So there are three simple tests or mainly available tests which can diagnose these conditions. One is endoscopy, which is a camera of the stomach. So uh, endoscopists put the camera through the mouth or through the nose into the esophagus. They can see the esophagus being too large or too tight at the bottom end, etc., etc. And they can also see all the food debris in the esophagus, which means the esophagus is not emptying properly. The second way of diagnosing is a barium x-ray in which the patient drinks a chalky dye and x-rays are taken which shows whether the esophagus is too large or is it not contracting properly etc. The most uh, important uh, investigation in confirming this diagnosis is pressure monitoring or manometry and what happens in this test that um, a patient is put the uh, doctors put a probe down the nose into the patient's lower part of the gullet and they ask them to swallow different things and to see whether esophagus is working um, too little or too much or not at all, depending on whether it's a very baggy esophagus or it is a very hyperactive esophagus or it is achalasia. So these are different tests which are available. Now, what is the treatment for these conditions? Um, Many of these conditions, uh, like uh, what I talked about when the esophagus is very baggy uh, in diabetes, etc., scleroderma, other conditions, the treatment is basically changing diet because the damage to the esophagus, uh, the muscle of the esophagus and the nerves of the esophagus cannot be replaced. So basically changing the diet, how we eat, what we eat, which what we do not eat. Now, that is a different topic. I'm going to discuss it in my next video. So what to eat, what not to eat when food is getting stuck. So please look out for it for next Tuesday. The second treatment is medical treatment. Now this medical treatment is sometimes there are some tablets available which if the esophagus is a wee bit lazy. It can increase the strength of the esophagus. It doesn't make it normal, but it can help a little bit. Again, in the conditions in which we talked about like corkscrew esophagus and nutcracker esophagus in which the esophagus is going crazy, some medical treatment can calm the esophagus down a little bit and make things a wee bit easier for the patient. The, these two treatments, endoscopic treatment, which means treatment given through the camera test like injection of Botox and also cutting the muscle inside or stretching it with the balloon, are mostly done for achalasia patient, the last condition I spoke about. Surgery is also limited to the same patients 
uh, to achalasia patients in which the surgeon cuts the muscle of the lower esophagus. They cannot bring the nerves back, which, is, which are not present. However, to release the pressure at the bottom end, they cut the muscle open so the esophagus becomes loose and things start going through a bit easier. Not a perfect treatment for a condition, however, it does improve the patient's uh, symptoms. I do hope you enjoyed this video and I look forward to seeing you next week. Thanks for watching. Take care.